daft. <clears throat> What's daft? This hat. Just look at it. I can't. I'm too busy. Yeah, I hope everyone else is too busy and all. Lucille! What? Someone help me put the dinner out. The table isn't set yet. Harry, if you think I'm working my fingers to the bone... Just stop your children in. If you press these three days ago, when I asked you, I wouldn't be doing them now, would I? Will you take those things off the table, please? No, I will not. And don't... Harry, will you take those trousers off the table, please, and put the ironing board up in the front room? I've told you, I can't press them on that ironing board. Any row of the two, why? You can just shut up. Yes, you keep out of this. Now, I won't tell you again. Harry, will you take those trousers off the table, please? And I won't tell you again. No, not until I've finished. Right. I'm going to get myself ready. Your dinner's burning on the stove. Get it yourselves. Oh, you're not eating, are you, Harry? Boy, I've been starving myself for three days. I'd shut up, Harry. Oh, Harry, can't you iron your kicks? I'll give you a tip, mate. Oh, you got to do... Don't you start. Start what? Do I have to remind... Do I have to remind you that at half past two today, people will be arriving at this house to be taken to church? And have I had one bit of consideration from either of you? Well, have I? Well, I'm warning you, if this table isn't cleared and set for dinner in five minutes, I'm washing the hands of a pair of you. There'll be no dinner, there'll be nothing. You know, Harry boy, with you not talking to Conceptor and Ina Sharples haven't been sent to Coventry, this is gonna be a very quiet wedding. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Applause, applause, applause. Where's I'll... Walter? He's upstairs getting himself ready. Only there's a slice of bread left on the plate. I wondered if he knew. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, now that we have heard the expressions of awe expressed in the telegrams we have just received, I would like to add a few personal remarks to the bride and groom and to couple this with a toast you know, to it's our chap. These marriages keep going rotten, yet they keep dashing off to church week after week, church bells ringing. You did it yourself, didn't you? Yeah, I know, but I was too young to know any different. So was Myra and Jerry. Now, sure up! As I stood in church this morning... Do you know, sure you're helping him. You're what? You're helping him. By the best man. Who is? You are helping him. You're assisting him on the first step to disaster. Do you know that? Look, have you spoken to him? Does he know what he's doing? Well, does he? Well, I should hope so. It's costing him enough. Speak to him, love. The first step can be stopped. There's always something... Well, you should up, for heaven's sake. Oh, I'm sorry. Weddings always get me like this. Oh, very nice. Oh, you're not going like that. It's been you one? Well, it's a toss-up between this and his birthday suit. Which one do you prefer? Oh, look, Dempsey can't go like that. I mean, it might be all right for quarter to pinch, but this is church. Well, so be it. It's only the first step to disaster. It's not as if it's out serious. What? Dennis, when all said and done, church is church. So oh, what? It's not what he's wearing. It's what's in here as counts. You're all right there, aren't you, Walter? Oh, I, I like weddings. <laughs> Silly little fool. Now, don't get funny about it, really, Walter. Women always think funny about weddings. They don't all think the same, but they all think funny. Now, come on, we'd best go and get Jerry early. OK. Hey. Huh. I've done it again. Forgot my guitar. Come on! Come in! Did you ever see out like that? Fancy going to church in a jazzy suit like that with your guitar tucked underneath your arm. Who? Now, who do you think? That daft lad of Dennis Tanner's. Oh, Walter, he's singing. You what? He's singing at the wedding. You can't sing all perfect love with your guitar. Oh, not him. No, at the reception after, you know. Oh, I should hope so, no. Are you going, Mrs Longhurst? To the reception? Me? No. Are you? Well, I didn't mean that. I, I meant to the church. I'm not. Well, I thought I'd go and see the knot tied, you know. Oh, well, you must please yourself, of course. But what I always says is, if, you can't, if you're not good enough to sit down and eat with them, then you're not good enough to pray for them. Any road, I'm going to our lilies. And even if I wasn't, you wouldn't get me inside that church. It's far too high for me, far too high. You'll be having statues next for that vicar. I know him. 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's fine. You what? The weather. Fine for the wedding. Oh, I... Mr. Swin is very kind to give me an hour off to go to the church, so I'd rather like some rice, please. I mean, you feel so silly if you've nothing to throw. Well, uh, not silly. Out of it. You can feel out of it, rice or no rice. Say as I expected an invitation. It was very nice of him. Or perhaps it was her. Oh dear. What's the matter? Oh, I wonder who it was as invited me. What does it matter, love? You're going. Oh dear. What's troubling you, Mrs. Caldwell? Well, knowing which side of the church to sit. I mean, I don't know if I'm a friend of the bride or the bridegroom, not being family. Well, I tell you what to do, Minnie, darling. You plunk yourself right in the middle of the aisle. Of course, the bride and her father will have to jump over you. But if you explain the situation, you know, they'll understand. Take no notice of them, Mrs. Caldwell. Well, are we all here, then? All about her? Oh, aye. Yeah. Let's hope she's locked herself in the vestry. Right, well, uh, <coughs> I'll go and collect her then. Sit down. What for? Because we're not running after her, that's what for. Oh, you're not still playing that game, are you? You can't keep it up forever, you know. That's just what we can do. It's because we're all so quick to forgive and forget. She keeps on doing the things she does. There's a lot of truth in what she says, Ken. You wouldn't chuckle, mate. It's the last time she's given us to run around. I'm not kidding, either. Oh, come on. Sit down, Ken, lad. She knows where to find us. Go on, love. Uh, could anybody do with a cup of tea? We all could, but the cars will be here any time now. There's no time to brew up. No, of course not. I'll say him. I beg your pardon, love. Oh, now I'm confusing you, aren't I? I mean, I'll say I'm a friend of the bridegroom. Oh, you mean which side of the church you're going to sit on? Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah, well, say him, love, because you've known him longer, haven't you? Yes, I have. I've made my mind up. Good. Good. You see. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. I'll go and see if the cars are here, eh? Well, we'd uh, better get ourselves organised then. Uh, uh, how's this for the first car? Uh, Ken, Valerie, Mrs. Colwell, and Mrs. Sharples. Oh, I'd rather not if you don't mind. You'd rather not what, though? I'd rather not explain. I'd rather not. Oh, there's a couple of cows here. Do we all know what we're doing? Uh, yes, we'll be... Well, nearly. I'll have to ask you to wait. The bridegroom hasn't arrived yet. He's what? 
Well, he has, and he hasn't. He came at two o'clock with a couple of friends of his, but seeing he had so much time to spare, he's gone off again. And he's never come back. By God, we'd better get a move on. It's five minutes to three. What are you worrying about? Look, now just relax for five minutes, will you? Church is only just across the road. Come on, sit down. Come and have finish your lemonade off. That's right, sit down there like a good lad. Gives you wind, that's Now shut up, you. Yeah, you can do as you like. Take the notes of you. It's very nice and private up here. Thanks for letting us come up, by the way. It's very good of you. Ah, uh, well, it's not a public bar, but since you get the wedding. <coughs> now look, I told you, just relax, will you? For five minutes. Oh yes, that clock of yours stop. I shouldn't be surprised, it usually does. Hey, it's five to three, you better be going, aren't you? Huh? Five to three! By gum, he's eager, isn't he? I should think he is eager, it's his wedding. to read out the telegrams of, and good wishes which have been received. Oh. <coughs> uh, our best wishes for a future full of happiness, Mr. and Mrs. Walker. Oh. Yes. 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 A long life and a happy one. Uncle Jim, Auntie Mabel, Ernest, Mary, Vince, Peggy and the children. <laughs> well, they got the money as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best wishes and much happiness, Sheila. Oh, nice. And last but not least, mm. uh, my blessings on you both, cousin... Who is it? Cousin Bella. Oh, Cousin Bella. My yeah. blessings on you both, Cousin Bella. <coughs> ah, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> friends, it is my happy duty as best man to propose the toast to the bridesmaids. I've seen some double acts in my time, but never one quite so charming as our two bridesmaids. So, ladies and gentlemen, the bridesmaids. The bridesmaids. The bridesmaids. Lovely. 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 I can't do that. What do you have to do, Dan? Oh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you should have seen the back of me by now, but uh, the toast to the happy couple should have been given by... Uncle Fred. Uh, Uncle Fred, by Jerry's Uncle Fred. Unfortunately, Uncle Fred isn't feeling too well. We hope it will soon pass, sir. And I've been asked to say a few words. Well, uh, as far as Jerry and Myra's concerned, well, there isn't much to say. We all know them so well. We've known them all our... Uh, as you know, my chosen profession is show business, so I would like to call on a few well-known phrases from the world of entertainment. Uh, we have seen today the curtain rise on a new show, the Jerry and Myra Show. <laughs> I'm sure you will join me 
in wishing it a long run. Yeah. With no scenes. Oh. Only acts. <laughs> uh, acts of kindness and consideration to each other and, and to everyone. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the top of the bill, Jerry and Myra. Oh. Jerry and Myra. Good album. Beach. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I should just like to say, um, on, on behalf of my wife and myself, how pleased we are that you are all here with us on this very important day uh, for us. Um, I should also like to, to thank you for the m many beautiful and useful... Uh, for, for the presents you have sent us. Um, I know. <laughs> Uh, I should also like to thank uh, Mr. Dennis Tanner for stepping in so well as best man at such short yeah. <laughs> Mr. George Dickinson, Myra's father, for uh, all his help and kindness, and, uh, and the staff of this hotel for yeah. looking yeah. after us yeah. so well. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all I've got to say now is that Myra and myself would uh, like nothing more than uh, to see you all getting together and, and enjoying yourself. Spot for a honeymoon, especially at this time of the year. Uh, there's no to talk here. Oh, take no notice of him. He's got a down on that part of the country. I should have thought of that. That'll all the be quite <laughs> enough of that. Oh, what? I'd have picked my York and myself. Mm. Oh, no. I can't agree with you, Bella. I have always believed, always, that a honeymoon should be spent amongst one's own people. It's so easy to slip into other people's customs. Oh, yeah, that's right enough. Uh, I was in Persia during the war, and now to see a great big fat fellow riding on a donkey, and his wife was trailing behind the great big load of wood on her head. Exactly. Oh, I don't mind a bit of caveman stuff myself. Take it from me, love. There is no better relationship between man and wife than in this country. Give and take. That's all it is. Give and take. Simple, but very, very effective. Aye, but who does all the giving? <laughs> yeah, dear. I think Mr. Tatlock is being a little obstreperous. You'd better speak to him. Aye, I do, Albert. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, just listen to them, the poor creatures. Yeah, what if you lived in America? Hey, look, Jack, suppose you had your time again. Which would you settle for, Persia or America? Hey, I don't know, Albert. I make note of all them big cars, but I'm a dab hand at riding a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> me at all, hey. What about you, Frank? Oh, count me out, Albert. I'm uh, quite happy listening to you two. No, there's nobody being counted out here. This is the age-old battle of the sexes. Uh, and you're on our side, whether you like it or not. So come on, let's oh, be having it. Oh, that's it, that's going <laughs> cool now. Come on, let's be having it. I'll drop a rum for me, drop please. Uh, Can I have a little stout to take out, please? Just a minute, love. Uh, hang on, Mrs. Walker. Oh, well, I, I'm not stopping, you see. Look, would you like to have a milk stout with me while you're here, love? Oh, well, thank you very much. Mr. Walker, one milk stout, please. Hey, whose side is she on? <laughs> oh, leave it alone. I'll get it. Hey, what's all this about? Just you come with me, Chuck. Hey, what's going on? Sit you down. Right. Now, let's be having you. Three against three. Hey, Jack, did you hear that? Aye, oh, I heard. But I reckon we're outnumbered, so <laughs> we'll just ignore <laughs> them. Come on now, what are you? Uh, uh, you're wrong. I've got a gun for you. Oh, no, all right, have a good time, I. All right, I'll look after yourself. Hey, come on, what are you Hey, come on. Get out. Hey, stop it. Come on, I think I've got a Right, cheer up. Tonight, eh? Right, let's get rid of them. Let's get down to some serious drinking, eh? What are you gonna have? Oh, dear, I'll have a sherry, please. What? Dry like him, or sweet like me? 
medium like both of you. You're not going to take that from her, eh? Can't help it. She's bigger than I am. Oh, I noticed you giving her the run around a bit earlier on. That was private. You keep out of it. Hey, two points of bitter, landlord, and a medium sherry, will you? Right, sir. Private, Dina Sharples has never been private in their life. That's the one you were talking about, was it? Look, if you want to stick pins into Dina Sharples, you go ahead. I've come here to enjoy myself. Oh, Ken, don't be silly. I'm not being silly. Oh, if he wants to enjoy himself, let him. Me, I'm going to get blind, paralytic drunk, and do something I'll be sorry for. Something you're sorry for? That's the only things I enjoy. <laughs> Five and six. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, mate. There you are. You have one yourself, mate. Right? Thank you very much. I'll have one with you, mate. <laughs> I'll bet you will at all. Yeah, then? Thanks. Confusion to our enemies. Brotherly love. A bit of common sense all round. <laughs> you don't look like getting it, do you, darling? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a number now uh, that we found especially for Jerry and Myra on their happy day. It's called Whole World Over. Uh, <laughs> find the one I love even if it takes a hundred years gonna take the one I love underneath the stars above making sure that she really cares Gonna tell the whole world over That I found the one I love Gonna praise and thank the Lord above Gonna tell the whole world over that Do you mind removing your head? Love. Am I in your way? You've been in my way a long time, love. Why don't you hop it? I'll go when I'm ready. And that's when it's all over. It's all over as far as I'm concerned. The smell's too much for me. He's uh, just gone. Oh, Harry, you should have stayed with him. Well, for he knows what he's doing. Oh, dear. Come on, have a day. I'm going to go up to dancing, so take your partner's place for the old-fashioned twist. And don't forget the bastard. Well, I want to pay me from time to time, but you just don't listen, don't pay me the mind, so keep moving on. Moving on. I'm moving on. Moving on. Oh, well, you've broken your vow.
No. 